All right, guys, today we are going to be ranking every single major video game controller. Now, this isn't going to include every variant of a controller, but it will include most of the popular ones. Now, I'm making this list based on a few different factors, but I think the most important one is how does the controller feel? Now, there are some miscellaneous things like the design of the controller, but I think we'll understand more as the list comes together. Now, starting off the list, we have the NES controller. Now, as nostalgic as people would get for this, I don't actually think it's that great of a controller. There's obviously like four, five buttons on this and there's not much to do with it. It doesn't feel great in your hands. Obviously, this is Nintendo's first, you know, major controller, at least in the United States here. And well, I don't know. It's just not great. I don't know if it's an F tier or a D tier. I think realistically, if you want to play a game on the NES, you're not going to choose this variation of the controller. You would choose the variation that came after the original, and that's the dog bone version of the NES. Now, this little thing is, you know, not much different than the original controller, except it doesn't have that stupid boxy design that would pinch your hands when you held the controller. I think this is a little bit better because at least it doesn't hurt your hands while you're using it. Now, next we have the SNES controller. Now, this is essentially a better version of the dog bone controller for the NES. It's very nostalgic. It feels great to hold and it has four buttons instead of the two on the NES. I don't really have much to say besides that, but there's some great games on the SNES and this certainly feels good to play with. So I'm going to give it a nice C tier for now. We can move this down later depending on the situation. All right, so here I put the Virtual Boy. Now you may be wondering, why do I have the Virtual Boy here? Because I'm only ranking controllers I've played with. And yes, I have actually played with the Virtual Boy before. I know a lot of people haven't, but I used to have a friend when I was a child who had a Virtual Boy for some reason, and I played it and it was bad. It, it was very bad. For those of you who don't know what the Virtual Boy is, it's basically like, like a VR headset, but the screen is all red and the games are just like, they're bad, they're, they're horrible. This is truly a terrible console and uh, perhaps even worse controller. So yes, this is, this is an F tier. <laughs> all right, so I have the OG Xbox controller, I believe. I didn't have an Xbox, but again, I had a friend who had a lot of the controllers and I don't know, I, this isn't really a, a super awesome controller to, to use in my opinion. I think it looks cool and it has that 2000s like Y2K aesthetic, uh, but I don't know. Do I really want a huge Xbox controller logo in the middle? Not really, uh, but you know, it's decent. So we'll, we'll put it C tier for now. All right, next, the N64 controller. This might be a controversial pick. Now, I've played with the N64 controller, and some people will say, oh, it's really cool. You know, it revolutionized the design for Nintendo controllers, which is kind of true. But when you actually use it, it feels like garbage. Like, it is incredibly flimsy. And don't even get me started on the whole idea of it not making sense. So there's a control stick in the middle, just one, just one control stick, which is used for basic movement. But that being said, that means for moving, your hand is going to be in the middle of the controller, not on the ends, like it's supposed to be. Your left hand's in the middle and your right hand is on the buttons. So there's just like this other side of the controller, this leg that has the D-pad on it that you just like, why why would they ever make a controller designed like that where you have to switch your grip to press the d-pad that literally is the worst design choice that you could do for for practicality reasons aesthetically it looks cool but it doesn't really make sense and the control stick itself is garbage it's like this nub on a skinny tiny little stick and there's a lot of like situations where you're gonna have your finger hurt from using the control stick i really don't like this controller at all it's not as bad as the nes controller or the virtual boy controller but it, it, it's not great it's d tier but fortunately, Nintendo heard the grievances with the N64 controller, and they came back strong. For the GameCube controller, it is an absolute design masterpiece. For one, it fits in your hands perfectly. I have no complaints, and I haven't heard really any about how the GameCube controller feels when they're holding it. Now, this is awesome, but then you look at the aesthetic of the controller. The buttons are different colors. They're memorable. So when you're playing the game and you see the like, command prompts or the instructions for how to play the game, you recognize it instantly, and it has a nice aesthetic to it. I remember playing Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door or The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, and when I would see a command prompt, I would know exactly what button to press. It's not like modern consoles where it just shows you x or a and you just like 
you know it, it's it's the button obviously you can recognize it but it's not like oh that's the flashing yellow or the flashing green button thing like the gamecube had and i loved that aesthetic choice now obviously the gamecube controller kind of brought the concept of multi-color for the controllers back then it was really just gray or black and they came out the gate with a purple controller with colorful buttons now this was completely out of left field but it worked perfectly i mean there's a reason why the gamecube controller is still used by hundreds of thousands of people as their main choice even on the switch this controller has defined itself as the main one to use if you're getting into something like smash bros and for that reason i have to put this controller into s tier it is probably a perfect controller to me and yes i did include the gamecube controller wavebird edition because this is kind of different but it's also quite popular now this controller is the wireless version of the gamecube controller and it has a very thick bottom to it personally when i use gamecube controllers it is the wavebird this is a controller i've used for years and years and i think it actually is quite valuable these days i included the wavebird because i feel like it added a lot to the conceptual value of controllers before at this point nintendo wasn't really going with wireless controllers and this was a step in the right direction so for that reason i'm also going to put it in s tier at the same level as gamecube because they're the same controller just wireless and wired all right now the first playstation controller look i've held this controller maybe once or twice and it's plastic it's just plastic it's there's nothing to talk about here this is the worst version of the playstation controller there's no analog sticks or anything it's not good it's just not good i guess it's better than a couple of these controllers I i'm starting to even think maybe i'll move snes down to d because it's just so basic the ps1 dualshock controller obviously is a lot better because you have two control sticks to be honest i don't even remember why there was a playstation controller that came out that only had the d-pad i don't remember completely the lore behind that but obviously this is better it doesn't feel amazing it's still cheap plastic but at least it has two control sticks now the ps2 controller is essentially just a better version of the ps1 controller i'm still not blown away by it it feels a lot like you know flimsy plastic uh, so it's kind of the same level all right now with the ps3 controller this is again the same controller but i'm pretty sure they added features like rumble or haptic feedback or something look it feels the same it's nothing crazy the addition of rumble though i think did add a lot uh i don't remember exactly if there was any other differences though so i i'm gonna put this at b tier maybe because i have more fond memories with it but you know i don't know it, it depends some people might have the ps2 and ps1 controllers in b tier i just i don't know okay the wiimote so this, to a lot of people, is an obvious S tier. And for me, I'm not 100% sure. So when I was making this list, this was pre-made already, and there was no Wii Mode with Wii Motion Plus. Now, if it did include Wii Motion Plus, that would be pretty significant because that feature added a lot, like the, the Wii Motion Plus that was built into the controller. Now, obviously, I remember games like Wii Sports Resort requiring that extra controller feature. So, you know, that is pretty significant. So I'm going to include that in here. And I think the Wii Mote by itself with no nunchuck or anything, it's a pretty solid controller. I do have a problem with it when you're holding it sideways. Like some games like Super Paper Mario would require you to hold it sideways. Obviously wasn't a big fan of that. And uh, I don't know, I think that hurt it a little bit. But when you're holding it normally and you're doing motion control based games, I think it's pretty good. So I'm going to put it in, uh, in high B tier. And obviously we'll expand that out later. Now the Wiimote plus the Nunchuck, this is a classic combo. Look, when you play games like Super Mario Galaxy with this, it just feels, it feels right. I feel like if you're gonna play any game on the Wii and you're gonna use the Wiimote, it's just always better with the Nunchuck because it's a control stick. Like nobody wants to press that crappy D-pad on the Wiimote, they wanna move around with a stick. So I'm gonna put it in A tier. I'm a big fan of it. All right, the Wii Classic controller to me, doesn't really scream mm, great. It's an okay controller. I know it's going for that classic retro SNES feel, but with control sticks. To be honest, it just feels a little awkward. It's it's cramped. I guess now it, it, it would be the best thing to compare it to like a Joy-Con with control sticks. Obviously, it's a little bit bigger and a lot more flimsy, but eh, I don't know. It's not bad. It's not horrible, but it's just not that good. So high seats here. 
All right, this is an interesting one. The Wii U gamepad. Now this was hated by some people, but also loved by a lot. I remember there was a lot of games that used both the TV and the gamepad in unison and it worked really well. Like Mario Maker, it was perfect for the gamepad design. Some games would use the gamepad as like a secondary screen that added a lot. It was kind of like the DS where one of the screens was in your hands and one of the screens was on top. It, it, it just, it worked. And uh, I don't think that the gamepad gets as much credit as it should because it really did bring in a great idea and it was expanded upon when the Switch came. Obviously with the Switch, you can't use two screens at once, but who knows, maybe that'll be a feature someday. As for how it feels to hold, I think it felt just fine. Like I don't really remember it hurting my hands. Obviously it's, you know, kind of clunky and heavy, but I think the Wii U gamepad is a solid high B tier controller. I don't know if it's over the original Wii mode or not. I think, I think I'll have it over the Wii mode. All right, the Wii U Pro Controller. So I think that this was the point where Nintendo realized, okay, we got to start making controllers that actually feel good again, like normal controllers, kind of like the GameCube. And the Wii U Pro Controller, it's certainly not the best thing in the world, but this feels right. Like this is a proper video game controller. There's no gimmicks here. It's just feel good in your hand. Now, if I compare it to some of the other traditional controllers that were out around this time, like the DualShock 4, which we'll talk about in a second, the Pro Controller is obviously not better. But I think this is a great step in the right direction for Nintendo, and I think it obviously progressed how they think about controllers going forward. So with that being said, I'm going to put this in A tier. I really love it. I think it's actually better than the Wii Mode and the Nunchuck. All right, now DualShock 4. Look, anyone who's had a PlayStation can say that this is the best like probably generation to generation upgrade out of almost any controller other than maybe the 64 to the GameCube. The DualShock 4 was made of stronger plastic. The rumble was a lot better. It had a cool touchpad on it that wasn't too intrusive, but it added a lot to the actual functionality of the games and the menus. The way it fit in your hand was near perfect for most people. Some people thought it might be a little cramped, but I personally didn't have any issues with it. The design was simple, but it was also stylistic with the buttons on the controller. The design was simple and it kept a lot of the old elements of the DualShock 3 while just overall modernizing the design. The only problem I have with this controller is I think it broke a little too easily sometimes, but maybe that's because I was playing games that made me angry and I threw my controller. But that's not important. This is an S tier controller in my heart. Uh, I, I think that this is one of the best controllers of all time, period. Okay, so I included the PlayStation VR controllers because look, I don't know what they were thinking with this design. I'm halfway a family friendly channel, so I'm not gonna say what these look like, but um, if you know, you know. And um, I don't know, this is just something I don't wanna see like being held. Like it, it just, let's just let's just put these in, in D tier and call it a day. I don't, I don't know. Okay, the Sega Genesis may be a little late in the generations, but I don't know. I just threw the Sega consoles that I've played on here. Look, this controller is a little weird. Not a big fan of it. Just kind of awkward. Um, I would really rather hold an SNES controller than this, as, uh, as crazy as that might sound. Just not a big fan of it. All right, the uh, Sega Dreamcast controller. Some people love it, believe it or not. Um, I'm not one of these people. Look, if you just look at the controller, it's just weird. It's just strange. It looks like a control pad for a spaceship, but that's not a good thing. This just feels like a massive controller with awkwardly placed buttons and, and control stick, and the D-pad, the thing in the middle, nothing with it makes sense. Now, I think the Dreamcast had a lot of great games but I don't like the controller at all. I think just the, the, the concept of it alone had potential, but the, the execution was just bad. I don't, I don't like this controller. All right, the Xbox 360. Look, this, in my opinion, is 10 times, maybe 20 times better than its competitor on the PS3. The Xbox 360 controller, it is revolutionary for Xbox, in my opinion, going from that really crappy looking original Xbox controller that, that felt strange to this masterpiece, basically, at the time. I, I don't know, the, the amount of fond memories I have holding an Xbox 360 controller, amazing. 
Now, is it competing with the modern equivalents? Not really, but the the aura of this controller that that when when you press that Xbox symbol in the middle and then you hear the beep, there's no better feeling. I, I don't know. The the buttons are cool. The only complaint, the plastic on like the D-pad is kind of cheap, honestly. But dude, I love this controller. S tier. All right, now we have the Xbox Connect. Okay, so for those of you who haven't played Connect games on the Xbox 360, it's kind of like VR without the VR. So it's like it's detecting your physical movements, but you're still looking at a screen. And this was used for games like you can imagine Just Dance using this. So when you dance to the song, it will detect your movements. This wasn't perfect because this came out in like late 2000s or something. But I think a lot of the games that you could play with this were cool at the time, and it was really finicky, uh, which actually added a lot to the experience of it, because if it was perfect, that would be good. Uh, and I'm sure nobody would complain if the Kinect was perfect. But I think when, when you remember the good old days of the Xbox 360 Kinect, you remember how funny it was when it would have like a miss input and you would mess up, but you would all laugh because the whole family was there, or your friends were there. So, you know, it's not a great piece of equipment, but I think for the memories, I'm going to put it in, uh, in low C tier. Okay, now this is a big boy, a big boy, the Xbox One controller. This thing, again classic people will debate countless hours about oh is the dualshock 4 better is the xbox one controller better in my opinion for this generation i think the xbox one controller is a bit better than the dualshock 4. i think with the xbox one it was just a little bit ahead of its time compared to the ps4 controller so i think i'll put it ahead of it i don't have that much to say about it because to be honest the xbox one and the xbox series x controller are basically the same in design but the series x is just a little bit better so for that reason i'm gonna put this in s tier but i will talk more about like the overall creativity and the feel of the xbox one controller when i talk about the series x all right now for a little wacky pick here we have the wii balance board Look, I remember playing hours and hours of Wii Fit on this thing, and there wasn't many games for the balance board, but Wii Fit, man, I loved it. I loved that game. It's the balance board, I, I have a problem with it though. When I was a kid and I played Wii Fit, I got on this thing and it told me I was fat. It told me I was fat. I wasn't a fan. Maybe it was true, but it hurt me. It hurt me bad. And you know, this, this, this balance board, this balance board had a lot of calibration issues. It would mess up. If you moved too radically, it would, it would get off balance. It would mess up your game. But the memories of Wii Fit for me are so strong. This is similar to the Kinect. This is really similar to the Kinect. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it in a similar spot. I'm going to put it in a similar spot. Okay. We've reached the modern era. So let's talk about the single Joy-Con, not two Joy-Cons just one. So holding just one Joy-Con sideways is perhaps the most unfun feeling if you are an adult male. As a matter of fact, I'm sure it's probably a bad feeling for anyone over the age of 12 years old, because this thing is tiny. This thing is literally this big. No exaggeration. So holding it is not fun. For some games, when you're holding a single Joy-Con, you would hold it vertically, which is a lot better. But for the most part, if you're playing like Mario Kart with a single Joy-Con or Smash Bros, it's just not fun. So I'm gonna put it in like high C tier. Okay, now two Joy-Cons. This is a little bit better. I'm gonna consider two Joy-Cons here being in the little thing it comes with. So it feels like a normal controller, the grip. Uh, and these again are just okay because they're meant to be held individually. When you put them in the grip, it feels somewhat unnatural, but when the switch first came out you kind of got used to it and it's not that bad so um i think for all like the cool rumble features it brings and essentially it being a better wiimote i'm gonna put it mm, high b tier okay now these next three controllers just banger after banger after banger the switch pro controller this is nintendo realizing okay the other two companies we're competing with somewhat have the best controllers on the market. How can we compete with them? And they made the Switch Pro controller. This thing feels perfect. Like when you are playing Smash Bros, Mario Kart, The Legend of Zelda, any game on the Switch, 
it works. It fits perfectly. It has good rumble features. Visually, kind of bland. I'll admit that. But the feel of the buttons and, and everything with the Pro Controller, it's just right. And when I use like a bootleg Pro Controller, like a third party one, I can feel the difference. Nintendo put care into the build quality of this thing. And I love this controller. I think it is probably not the best out of these three, but it is certainly, certainly an amazing controller. They did not miss with this new generation. Okay, the PS5 DualSense controller. Now I have a PS5, but I've used an Xbox Series X before plenty of times. And I think if we're comparing the two, I think the PS5 controller is just, I don't wanna say perfect because there's always room for improvement. And I, I think the controller is a little clunky, but that's a complaint I have with both of these. The PS5 DualSense controller is a complete step forward from the DualShock 4. Number one change, this thing is sturdy. Like you can hear, like if you drop this thing on the floor, you're like, damn, that like, you could hear like the springs, the mechanical parts of the controller when you drop it. Cause I dropped it the other day and this thing was loud. Like I was scared it broke, but it's, it's, it's build quality is good. It's really sturdy. And you compare that to PS4. I feel like the PS4 controller broke the moment I like breathed on it. It was, it was very flimsy compared to the dual sense. Obviously there's a whole lot of different changes with this controller. Visually, it looks a lot more futuristic. Some people don't like it. I think it looks pretty cool. The touchpad in the middle is a little bit more integrated with the controller. I'm a big fan of that. I think the LED looks super cool. The triggers are the biggest change about this controller though, because they have like this haptic feedback thing. So if you're playing Call of Duty, when you shoot the gun, there'll be like slight recoil you'll feel. The recoil sometimes feels cool. And I think when you first got the PS5, it was something you always wanted to try in, in different games. But I think over time, that feature got really annoying. And I, re I remember just playing certain games and just wondering, why does this exist? This is just making the experience worse. But I think for people who do like that feeling, this is the best controller ever, because this is awesome. And it's so accurate to the games that it's meant for. You know, I think this is the best controller, I think period. I think it's better than the GameCube in terms of, you know, all its different features. I'm not saying it's it has a better legacy than the GameCube. I think the GameCube has its its own podium it's standing on. But when I compare it to the DualSense, it this is the DualSense is just complete example of how you make a modern controller. But you know, on the Xbox side of things, this is no slouch either. This is essentially just an upgraded Xbox One controller. It's a little bit more sturdy. It's wireless and and all the cool features that you want. But the problem is, it's just not as innovative as PS5 in my opinion. I think this controller here is a bit more awkward to hold for me than the PS5. The PS5 just, it just kinda, you know, cups well with my hands. This, it feels a little more, like I, I have to think about how I hold it. I do imagine the Xbox Series X as just like a better Switch Pro controller. Like if you put them side by side, I feel like the Xbox Series X is just a better version of it. But when I compare it to the Xbox One, this is like the big difference. So PS5 went like a huge jump ahead from the PS4. But when I see the Series X, it's just like, it's a minor upgrade from the Xbox One. And I feel like there could have been a bit more. Now, of course, there's a bunch of like elite variations of these controllers on Xbox, but I'm not counting that. Although those do have good use. I've seen people use them. They're really expensive though. I, I just think for the base controller, it is also one of the best controllers of all time and i think that you know it's it's just a little bit under ps5 for me i left a link in the description of this exact tier list i use there's a bunch of different options here even the ones i didn't put on this exact list if i scroll up you can see a bunch of them which i didn't include but overall in the comments i just want to hear what your favorite controller period is do you agree with me or would you say it's a different one but anyway if you could please like the video, that would mean so much. And I am very grateful for you watching this video. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.